Hi everyone and welcome to this uh, session on making university choices. Uh, my name is Emily and I'm from the University of Essex uh, where I work as a student recruitment officer. So this session today should hopefully last about 30 minutes and I'm just going to kind of talk you through why you might consider going to university um, and then how you might go about choosing your courses uh, or the university that you might like to study at as well as give you some information about kind of what life as a student is really like. Uh, so let's get started. So first of all, why go to university? Uh, so there's many reasons why you might consider going to university. Um, obviously you can do a degree, um, which may train you to kind of go into a specific career, um, or it might just generally improve your job prospects. Um, you can continue on a subject um, that you're kind of really passionate about, um, you know, that you want to continue studying beyond A-level. Um, or perhaps study a subject that you haven't had the opportunity to study before, so something that's new to you that you've discovered through a different interest of yours. Uh, you'll get the opportunity to meet new people um, from all different walks of life, um, all different nationalities, um, and then maybe some people that you might otherwise not get the opportunity to meet. Uh, you'll get to learn new skills, um, many of which are transferable um, and that will be applied to lots of different aspects of your future life and career. Uh, you'll get the opportunity to push yourself out of your comfort zone, um, have new experiences, try new things. Um, you can have the opportunity to move away from home if you'd like to, um, kind of live with friends, other students. Um, also might get the opportunity to travel abroad. Uh, so some, some courses um, will offer, you know, a chance to spend a year or a term abroad studying or you might get an opportunity to get involved in SU volunteering abroad or perhaps research projects abroad. Um, so kind of there's lots of different opportunities that you could get involved in. Transferable skills is something that we talk about a lot. So as I kind of just mentioned, you know, you could do a course that's going to take you on to a kind of certain career path, but actually the majority of jobs don't require a specific degree in order to kind of go into that job. Um, and that's usually around 70% of the jobs that are out there. And obviously, if you, if you want to become a lawyer or a dentist, um, then obviously there are kind of clear courses uh, that you will need to study in order to get there. So if those are the kind of, if you've got a clear career path in mind, um, then obviously do, do your research and, and find out what the courses are. But if you don't have a clear, clear career path in mind, it doesn't mean the university is not for you. Um, so basically all degrees that you undertake will kind of provide you with transferable skills um, that you can take away and apply to a wide variety of jobs um, upon graduation. So you can see some of them listed here. Um, so, you know, alongside your subject knowledge, um, you know, you learn to be more organized, um, learn to manage your time, you know, you have lots of deadlines. Um, that you'll need to meet um, and you know it's university is quite different from school and that you know it's your responsibility to make sure things are done on time no one's going to be kind of following up after you uh, you'll learn new skills such as teamwork communication uh, problem solving critical thinking um, and kind of these will be picked up from kind of you know working with your peers group work um, presenting as part of your of your assessment um, and, and these are kind of the skills that you may not necessarily obtain or, or, or struggle to, to obtain or take longer to obtain um, if you go straight into the working world. Um, you know, if you come away from a degree, it could be that you, you know, enhance your job, pro job prospects as well. Um, you know, have the opportunity to enter at a higher level or go further. So on that line, um, I just want to speak to you a little bit about kind of job prospects um, and kind of... Um, money and, and salaries moving forward. Um, so you can see that the average salary of a graduate um, is around £30,000. Um, and I say this is an average. Generally, it would usually be slightly lower than that, um, perhaps at around sort of £21,000, £25,000, um, which don't get me wrong, is still an amazing salary um, to start on as a graduate. Um, and kind of, if you choose to go to university and get a degree, uh, it's generally estimated that you will earn kind of about £100,000 more across your working life um, than if you were to choose to go straight into full time employment. Um, so it may feel like it takes you a little longer to get to kind of the earnings and, and kind of having money coming into your bank account, but it's often considered that it's worthwhile in the long run. Um, 
as well, 70% of graduate jobs, um, as I've kind of touched on, don't kind of specify the degree that you have to kind of undertake um, in order to apply for the role. Um, and that's, again, for those transferable skills. Um, so these will often allow you to kind of start by having these transferable skills, you better apply for jobs at a more senior level or even be able to progress up within that job um, if there's you know development opportunities faster if you've already had the opportunity to kind of acquire some of these transferable skills um, that you can get at university. A few of the good places to start in terms of trying to figure out first of all if university is right for you um, and then looking into perhaps some of the universities or courses that you might be interested in attending or studying um, is these two websites here. The main one is the ucas.com um, so all UK uh, students um, applying for their undergraduate um, study will apply through UCAS. Um, so they really do have a lot of good resources on their website um, that you can kind of use to kind of help guide and support you through the process. And they also have a really great search function. Um, so you can search kind of by course um, or region of the country that you want to be in or, or by institution, by university. Um, so it's definitely worthwhile taking a look at that. Um, there's also the uni stats. Uh, website that you can see there um, and this is kind of information that's provided by real students so it's taken from real student surveys um, and so is kind of genuine student experience and information um, about student life and, and graduate and kind of graduate job prospects um, from actual students rather than kind of any marketing that you might get from university so again a really good kind of website that you kind of should really check out if you get the opportunity so if you get to the point where you think, yep, yeah, a university degree is the right thing for me, um, then of course you'll need to start doing your research and start figuring out where you're gonna study and what you're gonna study. Now we generally always recommend that you start first of all by choosing the course that you would like to study. Um, and this is because you don't wanna kind of put yourself in the situation where you go, yeah, I definitely want to go to this university. I definitely wanna go there only to discover they don't offer the course that you are uh, particularly interested in studying. Um, so it's always good to kind of start with the course um, and how you choose really is up to you. Um, it could be something you're passionate about. It could be you wanting to continue something that you're currently studying, uh, try something new entirely. Um, you know, it could be that you have that career path in mind. So you need to, you know, there's specific degrees that you need to undertake in order to get you there. But there's a wide variety to choose from and it can be quite daunting. Um, you know, there's over 40,000 kind of subject area and courses to choose from. Um, but if you're not sure which particular course um, you would like to study, you know, do pick a wider subject area um, and then you can kind of research and figure out what course options are available. So, for example, um, if you're interested in a sports degree, um, the University of Essex offers courses in sport and exercise science, sport therapy, physiotherapy. Um, so, you know, by searching by that subject area and that university brings up those options and then you could then look into each of those in more detail um, to kind of find out which is the best fit for you. A few things to bear in mind, um, you know, you will be studying this subject for three or more years. So, you know, do try and make sure it's something you are genuinely interested in, passionate about. You're going to be motivated to learn um, and study and spend time thinking about and also that it's your your decision. So obviously you can take advice um, from, from your school or from your friends or from your family, um, but it, when it comes down to it, it will be you that has to undertake the work. So do make sure it's your decision and your choosing to study what, what you would like to do. When you're doing your research into these different courses, um, you may notice that there's different kind of types of courses out there. Um, so let's try and break those down for you. Uh, so you may notice uh, often courses start with a, a BA or BSc or an LLB uh, and these all mean slightly different things. So a BA is a Bachelor of Arts um, and is usually associated with kind of humanities or social sciences subjects, uh, so history, English, those kind of subjects. Um, and that's because they tend to be more theory based um, and as a result of that they tend to have less contact time um, but kind of more personal study time. <coughs> excuse me. Um, and then of course you've got the Bachelor of Science, BSc, um, and as you may expect, this is more associated with science subjects or STEM subjects. Um, and this is because they tend to have a more practical element built into the courses as well as the theory, 
um, and that results generally in kind of higher contact hours. Um, so you'll spend time in the labs um, with the researchers kind of doing more practical work as well as the theory. We've also got on there the LLB. Um, this is something we do offer at Essex as well, which is for law courses. Um, so if you see LLB, um, it's always associated with law courses. Um, if you're thinking of doing medicine or anything like that, again, they may have slightly different kind of letters at the beginning. And so they all mean slightly different things. So do look out for those. Uh, most courses are kind of three to five years, the majority three, but depending on what you're studying, it can be up to five. Um, so kind of do take a look at that as well. Uh, the majority of universities also offer what we call sandwich degrees as well. So you'll have the standard kind of three year version of the course and there'll often be a kind of year abroad option or a placement year option as well. Um, so these will be kind of an additional year embedded into your degree. So like a three year degree will become a four year degree. And you'll spend that extra year either working in an industry, um, you know, learning practical skills, kind of putting what you've learned in theory into practice um, in a workplace environment. Or it might be studying abroad, so going to a different country, continuing your studies, um, but in a different environment, learning about new people and new culture um, and that kind of thing. So if that's something you're interested in, um, then that might be something you want to consider. So as I mentioned, there really is a wide variety of courses out there. Um, not all universities offer all courses. Um, and as well, each university's course may be different. So there might be two universities that seem to offer the same course, so they might both offer uh, BSc in mathematics, um, but actually they might be slightly different um, when it comes down to it, um, which is why you do really need to do your research. So as I say, you don't want to judge a course by its title. Um, so some courses will have a really generic or what seems to be a really bland title. Um, but actually when you kind of do your research, start looking at the course in a little bit more detail, you can actually see the academic content, the modules that are on offer, um, as I say, two universities might have the same, the kind of same title, uh, same degree, as it were, um, but actually when you break it down, there's different modules um, on offer at different institutions. Um, so if you're interested in particularly different areas of that subject, then you might want to kind of look at the academic content in a little bit more detail. Likewise, you might want to think about kind of how the module and the courses will be taught. Uh, this again will, will differ greatly depending on what it is that you're studying. Um, so you'll usually be lectures and seminars, um, tutorials, um, you know, work in the labs if you're doing more practical courses, um, independent study, reading time, that kind of thing. Um, and you may also be interested to look at um, how it will be assessed as well. So a lot of different modules and a lot of different courses and universities will have different assessment methods. Um, so, you know, typically it tends to be coursework, exams, potentially group work, presenting, that kind of thing. Uh, some will have a combination of all of them, some will only have coursework, some will only have exam. Um, and again, if this is something that's important to you, then it's something that you want to be researching um, ahead of time um, and finding out what, what different courses um, look like, essentially. Of course, when looking at courses, um, you also want to consider the entry requirements. Um, so these will usually be kind of quite plainly and clearly stated, uh, both on UCAS and on university websites. Um, and these are kind of the qualifications that are required in order to kind of receive an offer of a place or secure a place on that course. So you need to consider carefully what qualifications are needed um, and then what grades in those qualifications you need. Um, so, you know, if you're planning well ahead of time, you think, oh, I, I need to undertake A-levels in these subjects, to better do this course. Um, so, you know, it may be that you need to have undertaken a, a subject at A level or B tech in order to get a place in that course. So make sure you look kind of quite carefully. You don't want to find yourself applying for courses um, that you're interested in, um, but actually discover that, you, you know, from the outset, you don't meet the entry requirements. So it's almost a, a wasted spot on your application because um, you only get five options to apply for. So you don't want to be applying for somewhere that, you know, from the outset, you don't have a chance of securing a place. So make sure that all of your places are, are four courses and institutions that you know you do stand a good chance um, of securing an offer and a place to. Uh, for some courses as well there may be work experience um, requirements it's unusual in undergraduate courses but it is possible so again do make sure you check carefully um, and there will be some kind of admissions 
um, processes that involve interviews um, or additional testing exams. Uh, so for example, um, Oxford and Cambridge, um, or if you want to do medicine or anything like that, they will usually have kind of more involved admissions processes. Um, so you'll have to do more kind of parts beyond the initial application um, through UCAS. But kind of once you've got your course picked out, the next thing to think about is then what university you might take that course. Um, so obviously, first thing we do is, is seeing what universities offer that course. Um, and then you might have to think about which of those are a best fit for you. So obviously there's a wide variety of universities out there. I mean, depending on what you want to study will depend on how long that list of options that you've got available to you are. Um, but you may want to think about kind of what type of university. So, you know, some are city-based universities, some um, like us at the University of Essex are campus-based universities. Um, they'll be of different sizes, different locations, um, you know, for a lot of students, kind of reputation and kind of league table rankings um, are important. Um, so you can look those up online and find out where that university sits um, in the rankings for that particular subject area, if that's something that's important to you. Um, so do look at that as well. Uh, you may want to consider whether you plan to stay at home or move away. You know, do you want a, a university that's just around the corner um, or do you want to move as far away as possible and be at the other end of the country? Um, you know, what accommodation offer? Um, offering do the universities have? Um, you know, is it going to be difficult to find somewhere to stay? Um, is it, you know, is it going to be guaranteed for you? Kind of what academic and social facilities do they have? Um, you know, you know, if you're particularly interested in a certain sport or a certain hobby um, that's really important and integral to, to kind of your your life and how you like and things you like to do, you know, can they offer that? Can they support that? Uh, what employability support is out there? You know, you want to be going to university thinking about your future um, and kind of what support is out there to help you um, go into the graduate and working world. Finally, you might want to think about scholarships and bursaries that are available. So all universities will have kind of an abundance of scholarships and bursaries that are available. Um, they'll differ substantially between institutions um, and even potentially between courses. And they're essentially usually kind of tuition fee discounts or other kind of funding support um, and will usually be have eligibility criteria that's related to either your kind of your grades, your outcome of your, your studies. Um, some might be to do with what school you've come from or what country you've come from, that kind of thing. Um, majority of universities will have some kind of search function or, or somewhere where you can look into the scholarships and bursaries. Certainly for Essex, uh, we had a scholarship finder on our website so you can kind of input your information, what you're hoping to study, and it will bring up the different scholarships and bursaries that you know you could potentially be auto um, applied for, or you know you need to apply for yourself. Um, so it's something that you may want to consider, kind of looking into. One of the key decisions then from the outset is whether you want to stay at home or move away. Um, this is entirely a personal choice, um, and there obviously are pros and cons to both. Um, Obviously, if you move away, you get a chance to kind of experience your independence, um, you know, have the real kind of social life, social side of being a student. Um, you know, you'll be in a flat with friends or a student house with friends. Um, yeah, opportunity certainly to, to pick up a lot of life skills, you know, learning to cook, do your own laundry, um, cleaning, all those kinds of things. Um, You'll likely live near, potentially live near a town or live on a campus, um, which might be, you know, a different experience of perhaps what you're used to living at home. Um, likewise, though, if you're living at home, um, you know, you may wish to be in, you know, remain in your local area, stay close to your friends and family, uh, which is absolutely fine if that's what you would prefer. Um, it can be considered cheaper to stay at home, um, which you know, may or may not be the case. Um, depending on kind of where you're living and where your university is, you might need to factor in commuting costs, um, how many days you need to be, you'll need to be on campus and how much that's going to cost. So it isn't always guaranteed as being cheaper, um, but it is an option. So if you, if you know, if you don't want to move far away from home, um, then, you know, you can stay at home and, and study from, from there as well. But if you do want to move away, you might want to think about what accommodation options are available at the universities that you're looking at. Um, so, for example, do they have on campus accommodation? Um, you know, if it's a university that's nearby, are you going to be living at home? Do you want to move away? Um, 
a lot of different universities will have a lot of different accommodations. Um, you know, so they can be studio flats on, you know, rooms with en suites. So you've got your own bathroom. Um, they could be with shared bathroom facilities. Um, all of them will have different price tags attached to them. Uh, likewise, you could have catered or self catering accommodation. Um, so you would really think about your budget um, and kind of where you can afford to stay based on, on the income that you'll have as a student. Um, certainly for first year students, we're very fortunate at Essex that we're, off, we're able to guarantee all first year students um, accommodation um, if you apply by the deadline um, to kind of be living on campus during your first year. Um, this won't necessarily be the case for all universities, so say it's worth looking into each university and their accommodation options um, kind of from the outset. Um, ordinarily, you know, student accommodation in the first year and then you'd be looking to move out into a student house with some of your friends um, or moving home for, for the second or third year. So again, you know, where you're going to be living whilst you're studying is an important factor. Um, so do kind of do your research for the different options that you're considering. As we've kind of touched on, um, kind of the employability and career support is a really important factor um, of kind of universities. Um, you know, you want to be planning for your future. And so it's worthwhile looking into each university um, and kind of considering what support they have got out there. You know, do they have advice, you know, drop in sessions, workshops, um, you know, help with your CV, interviewing skills. Um, do they have big careers events, give you opportunity to network with businesses and companies, um, you know, all those kinds of things. Um, certainly at Essex we have, we have a great uh, career hub that, that helps with all of this support, organises all these events. Uh, we also obviously have the SU um, and, and they're there to help and support in that area as well. Um, certainly for SU, you know, they, they run a a range of kind of the places on campus so you can get yourself a part-time job or ambassador work um which can all help to kind of go into your cv once you once you've graduated and also help pick up those those extra skills um while you're a student so again there'll be different levels of, of support at different universities um so if there's something that's important to you then again do have do some research into each institution Likewise, you may want to think about what other support is available. Um, so there'll always be academic support. You know, you'll have a personal tutor within your department or peer mentors. Um, but what other support is out there? Uh, so, for example, Essex, we have Skills for Success um, and they offer support and resources um, to kind of to help students reach their full potential. Um, so these might be kind of helping you with with. Uh, academic study skills, um, you know, learning how to do your assignment writing, um, help you with maths uh, or digital skills or, or even English language. Um, so, you know, look into, you know, if you think you might need some additional support in some areas, you know, look into what support they have available. Um, health and well-being as well, really important. Um, a lot, I'm sure a lot of universities will have a lot of good kind of health and well-being teams that you can access. Um, Certainly we have professionals um, who can provide support on any issues concerning mental and emotional health, um, you know, including assessment and referral for counselling or, or mentoring if needed whilst you're with us as a student. Um, so there's always support there for you. Likewise, if you have any kind of disability uh, or dyslexia or something like that, um, we have a great student services hub. Um, and they kind of have specialist advisors that can kind of give you advice and guidance and, and any support that you need throughout your time as a student. Um, if you need extra time and examinations or anything like that, then, then they will help you to organize that. Likewise, healthcare services, you know, if you get ill as a student, do you know where to go? What, what support is available? We're very fortunate at Essex, at our Colchester campus, we've actually got NHS doctor's surgery on site uh, that students can register to. This may not be the same for all universities. So again, it might be worth kind of looking at this if it's something that, that, that will be important to you. Um, you might need some kind of health support whilst you're a student um, just to kind of look into that. Moving on then, I guess a little bit to student life. Um, so obviously this is a big part of your kind of student experience. So, you, you know, you've got your academic learning and, and your degree, but what about everything else? Um, so there's a lot that goes into student life, a lot of activities that you can get involved in. And one of the main things kind of driving this forward um, will be your students' union. Um, so it's essentially, student, your students' union is essentially 
students looking out for students, students running things for students. Um, so at Essex, uh, we have a group of over 14,000 students um, and they're kind of a student-centered organization um, and kind of they're there to represent you um, and kind of you can go to them for all your needs um, and they can direct you, you know, to support you need or help that you need. Um, they'll usually run places on campus. So for example, Essex, they, they run our, our on-campus shops um, and some of our kind of cafes and restaurants. Um, they have advice services available to you if you need it. Um, and then they run things like uh, a safety bus, for example. Um, so if you're studying, you know, really late at night in the library um, and, and need to go home really late at night, but, you know, don't feel comfortable walking or anything like that, then they, they offer like a bus service that will help get you home safely um, and that kind of thing. So essentially students are kind of at the heart of everything that they do. Um, and they're always on the lookout for kind of ideas from students, how they can improve um, and kind of make your student experience at university as best as it can be. Sports might be something that's of particular interest to some of you. So if you uh, are really passionate or really enjoy doing sports, just like being active in general, there's lots of different sports um, available at university for you to get involved in. Uh, now this could be just for fun um, or competitively um, for the university teams. Um, they usually have kind of regular weekly session training sessions. Um, there'll also always be a social side to the, the sports clubs as well. Um, and as you can see here, I mean, the list here is of the, the, the sports available to, to kind of get involved in at Essex. Um, majority of universities will have a, a very similar um, list um, as well. So again, if you are really interested in, in, in continuing a sport or trying a new sport, uh, then this might be something you want to look into um, at different institutions. Social life, the important part. Um, There'll always be lots of different societies and stuff you can get involved in. Obviously, on campus, um, you will have, you know, bars, restaurants, uh, loads of different spaces where you can meet friends, make friends, um, get involved in different ac activities that's being run. As I say, SU run loads of different activities throughout the year for you to get involved in. There's also a wide variety of societies and clubs as well. So outside of the sports ones that we've just covered, um, there's also a wide variety of other societies. So you can see a really long list here, um, you know, some by subject um, or by interest, um, religion, culture, that kind of thing. And if the university doesn't already offer something in their societies list that, that kind of you're interested and passionate about, you know, you can also kind of request to set up a new society as well. Um, so it's always going to be something you can get involved in, uh, something new to try and a good way to make friends um, and experience everything. Um, and I would really encourage you to, to get in, get involved with as, as many different kind of activities um, and kind of really make the most of the time that you're at university. Um, so I'd just like to leave you then before I finish. Um, the, one of the best ways to kind of really get a feel for a university and whether it's the right fit for you is to attend the open days. Now, of course, this is quite challenging this year. Um, and obviously later on in the year, if you do get the opportunity to attend a campus in person, then I would definitely recommend it. But in the meantime, do try and kind of make use of the virtual replacements a lot of universities have put in place um, to kind of get a feel for university, take a, a virtual campus tour or a virtual tour of the accommodation. I know certainly for Essex, um, we've made our virtual open day platform open all the time. Um, so you can access it anytime you like, um, take a virtual campus tour or, you know, hear from some of our academics. Because um, it's really the best way to kind of really get a feel for, for what it would be like to be a student there. You know, you, you hear some subject talks. Um, join in on some taster sessions um, and kind of have a chance to actually speak to the academics that will be teaching you um, and some students are already there so you can really get the information from them about what it's like to be a student there um, so really do try and, try and check them out um, as best as you can that's everything from me um, thank you very much for listening i'll just leave you with this information on the slide here um, so you've got our website and our socials if you want to get in contact with us also on there is our email address um, please do email us if you have any questions or want to find anything anything more about Essex. 
um, we'd absolutely love to hear from you. Um, likewise, there's a QR code on the screen there. Um, and if you'd like to scan that with your phone um, and sign up, then we'll pop you on our marketing list and keep you up to date with everything that's happening at University of Essex um, and offer you any support or guidance that you might need through the application process. So, so do, do do that if you're interested. Thank you very much for your time. And as I say, do get in contact if you have any questions at all. Thank you very much.